Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, in the Khalaq as Samawati wal Arda wa Jaala al Bulumati wal Nur, Thumma al Ladina Kafaru bi Rabbihim Yadilun, wa Ashadu an la ilaha illa Allah wa Ahdahu la Sharika lah, wa Ashadu anna Muhammadan Abduhu wa Rasuluh. بشر وأنذر لا خير إلا دل الأمة عليه ولا شر إلا حذرها منه فصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن اهتدى بهداه إلى يوم الدين نسأل الله جل وعلا أن يبصرنا بالحق وأن يمن علينا بالالتزام به والثبات عليه حتى يتوفانا وهو راض عنا اللهم إنا نسألك علما نافعا وقلبا خاشعا وعملا متقبلا اللهم اجعل تجمعنا هذا تجمعا مرحوما وتفرقنا من بعده تفرقا معصوما ولا تجعل فينا شقيا ولا محروما all praise is due to Allah. We praise Him, we worship Him, we seek His assistance, and we seek His tawfiq, and we pray to Him subhanahu wa ta'ala to teach us that which is beneficial to us. فَإِنَّهُ مَنْ يُرِدِ اللَّهُ بِهِ خَيْرًا يُفَقِّهُ فِي الدِّينِ اللَّهُمَّ فَقِّهْنَا فِي الدِّينِ اللَّهُمَّ لَا عِلْمَ لَنَا إِلَّا مَا عَلَّمْتَنَا إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْعَلِيمُ الْحَكِيمُ اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما Tonight is the night of the 7th of Rajab of the year 1439 since Hijrat al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam which translates into March the 24th of the Gregorian calendar 2018 I pray to Allah azza wa jal to make all the brothers and sisters who are with us tonight, blessed in them, in them, in themselves, and in their families, um, and I pray to Allah Azza wa Jal to keep giving us tawfiq. Ahmadullah wa ashkuru wa qad ta'adhana bil ziyada liman shakar for his tawfiq and for making it easy to once again sit down around the circle of knowledge, where we remember Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, we learn about Him and we learn the beneficial knowledge that if acquired sincerely and for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal, it has the effect of drawing you closer to your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala, where you inch closer to Him subhanahu wa ta'ala, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala conclude our life with the best deeds. Allahumma khtum lana bis salihati a'malana. Allahumma ameen. Um, Subhanallah, I do apologize that it looks like today, unfortunately, we're, still, we're having again the same problem that we has, had last week. It worked at home, subhanallah, but <laughs> when we came to the masjid, it, uh, it, it's still giving us a, a problem. That's what we learn, right? Ta'ala, Allah will make it easy and we'll, we'll figure it out. Um, as you noticed, uh, tonight is the 7th of Rajab. And this means that Ramadan is uh, getting closer and closer. Ibad Allah, don't expect that you will benefit from Ramadan, from Ramadan if you start preparing for it the night before. That's not going to happen. And, uh, you know, obviously the, the fact that we know that we are in Rajab, which means that less than two months separate us from the beginning of Ramadan. Right? What comes after Rajab? Sha'ban, after Sha'ban, Ramadan. So tonight, we're the, tonight is the seventh of Rajab. That's that means less than two months, right? Less than two months separate us from the month of Ramadan. Allahumma balighna Ramadan. But it is not wish, wishful thinking. It is by preparing for it, by making a lot of du'a to Allah Azza wa Jal, and getting ready for that by all through all the means and and ways that our righteous ancestors used to prepare for the month of Ramadan, including, not limited, but including starting to actually fast so that you hit the ground running uh, as Ramadan starts. And I just want to quickly, 
This is not the topic of tonight's halaqa, but I want to quickly point out that there is a lot of common uh, wrong knowledge out there. Uh, that uh, you know, there are some specific acts of worship for the month, specifically for the month of Rajab, and I can tell you that the scholars uh, have all agreed unanimously and all said that there is nothing specific for the month of Rajab. There is no type of you know fasting specific for the month of Rajab, or no type of you know prayers for the month of Rajab. There is nothing. Nothing has been authentically narrated to us or conveyed to us that there is anything specifically that you need to do during the month of Ramadan. Obviously, you're welcome and you're, you're encouraged to keep doing the types of worship as you used to do. But don't do something that you have the intention that this is for, I want to do this because we are in Rajab. Right? So there is nothing specific for the month of Rajab. With that said, um, we start with this uh, topic, our topic for tonight. Um, as you know, we've been commenting on this text of Aqidah called al Aqidah al Tahawiyah. We start commenting on this uh, text or this Aqidah al Mubaraka, Aqidah al Imam Abu Ja'far al Tahawi al Hanafi, rahimahullah ta'ala. And uh, as you know, we've been commenting on this text of Aqidah statement by statement. And uh, where we left off last time, last Saturday, we actually talked pretty extensively, uh, if you remember, about the previous statement. Um, statement number 87 uh, oh, I'm sorry actually statement number 86 we've talked extensively about the statement as a matter of fact we probably spent like almost two weeks on this remember we talked about the statement um, so I hope that we all remember all the discussion that we um, did, had about the statement because it is a very important statement and we said this was actually a um, a, a, this is a section, this is part of a section of this aqidah where Imam Abu Jafar is talking about what? Qadr. Right? This is part of his discussion about the Qadr, which is an important pillar of an Iman, one of the mandatory pillars of an Iman, right? And uh, we also talk about what it means to believe in the Qadr, how we should actually believe in the Qadr, right? And that Allah Azza wa Jal knows everything, which is the most important aspect of Al-Qadr, the knowledge. Um, we all, we talked about all of that and we said there is actually, you know, this belief in Al-Qadr is actually something that is very beneficial for the believer, right? And we said that it has fruits and it has consequences for the believer. It actually earns the believer tranquility and steadfastness in the face of calamities and in the face of the different types of qadr of Allah Azza wa Jal that we go through, right? And we said that it is very important to remember and it is very important to, for the believer to know that everything that happens in this life is by the qadr of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. Nothing, nothing happens like that, haphazardly. Nothing happens without a prior decree by, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything happens according to the decree of Allah Azza wa Jal, exactly the way Allah Azza wa Jal decreed it and wrote it. Everything in this universe happens exactly according to the decree of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, Al-Qadr Sabiq, the preceding decree. And we believe that everything that happens in this universe, Allah Azza wa Jal knew it, Allah Azza wa Jal wrote it, Allah Azza wa Jal willed it to happen and Allah Azza wa Jal created it. When it happened, it means that Allah Azza wa Jal brought it into existence and created it so that it actually takes place and exists, right? And Allah Azza wa Jal wished it to happen. When, when the believer remembers this and is aware of this, then whatever happens, whatever comes their way from the good, or the bad aspects of the qadr from the aspect of the, of the person. Like we said, and I keep repeating, and this is very important, brothers and sisters, that all of the qadr of Allah Azza wa Jal is good. All of the deeds of Allah Azza wa Jal are good. No evil is attributed to Allah Azza wa Jal. 
even creating evil, even the fact that he created evil, right? And the fact that he allows evil to happen and allows bad things to happen in itself is good because this is the purpose of creating us. And he showed us the good and he showed us the evil and warned us against it. But he allows that to happen because we're, we're going to be brought to recompense, right? A lot of people actually make a big mistake about that. Wallahi, how many times have we heard people saying, but wait a minute, brother, you always have told us that Allah Azza wa is good and all his deed is good. How about all this evil and bad things that happen in this universe, in this world? What about that? How can Allah Azza wa Jal, or how does Allah Azza wa Jal allow it to happen? We say he allowed it to happen because this is why he brings us to recompense on the day of judgment. Right? He warned us. The fact, and this is very important, brothers, a lot of people make this mistake. They say that since the fact that Allah Azza wa Jal allowed it to happen, that means he loves it, or he likes it, or he is pleased with it. No, not at all. Not at all. You have to make it a distinguish or distinction between the fact that Allah Azza wa Jal allowed certain things to happen and whether He likes them or is pleased with them being done or not. The fact that He allowed it to happen and exist doesn't mean it's not an indication that He loves it. And this is why we need to distinguish and we've talked about that. I, and by the way, sometimes people say that, or thinks that I'm repeating this you know, quite often. And the reason I do that, believe me, I'm doing this on purpose. Because I, from what I sense, a lot of you have not heard this discussion or this commentary the way that we're going through it in this halaqa before. So sometimes it's not easy to understand it. And that's why I keep repeating. I keep repeating because I want to make sure that you understand fully. You're able to explain it to yourself. You're able to explain it to others. You're able to express yourself when you are faced with a question, how come that, how come that God, right, as they call it, God is good and all of these evil things happen? We absolutely have an answer to that. We say Allah Azza wa Jal, our Lord, allows certain things to happen existentially. He, the fact that they happen, it means that He wished them to happen. Sha'a. Sha'a Allah that they happen. وَمَا تَشَاءُونَ إِلَّا أَن يَشَاءَ اللَّهُ رَبُّ الْعَالَمِينَ Nothing happens in this universe, whether the disobedience of the disobedient, or be it the obedience of the obedient. The belief of the believer, إِمَانُ الْمُؤْمِنِ وَكُفْرُ الْكَافِرِ Both of them, Allah Azza wa Jal, wish them to happen. This is important because nothing in this universe happens against the will of Allah Azza wa Jal. And the fact that they happen, it means that Allah Azza wa Jal wished them to happen. And we said this Mashia is also called Al-Irada al kawniyyah The existential or universal will of Allah Azza wa Jal. Which means, why is it called al kawniyyah From al kawn Kana. Ma sha Allahu kan. وَمَا لَمْ يَشَأْ لَمْ يكن. So don't think that the disbeliever disbelieved against the will of Allah. Yani he didn't want that person to disbelieve and he disbelieved against or in spite of the will of Allah. He allowed him existentially to disbelieve. But he doesn't like it. دِينًا وَشَرْعًا This is what brings us to two things. So we have two types of irada. Allah has two types of wills. الإرادة الكونية, the existential will, and الإرادة الشرعية, which is the religious or the legislative will. When the disbeliever disbelieves, Allah Azza wa Jal willed it existentially, but he did not will it شرعاً ودينا. ولا يرضى لعباده الكفر. He is not pleased with disbelief to his servants. والله لا يحب الفساد. In the ayah of Surah Al-Baqarah. And Allah dislikes corruption. He dislikes it deenan wa shar'an. But he allows certain people to corrupt and allows certain people to actually, if they choose to do so, he allows them 
to disbelieve or do evil or sin and make mistakes because they will have to answer to that on the day of resurrection. This is part of the recompense, al-hisab. And there is then al-jaza or al-iqab, reward or punishment. So this is very important. Also, we talked about the fact that the believer submits to Allah Azza wa Jal. We don't question why certain things happen, but we know that all the qadr of Allah Azza wa Jal is based on what? Based on the wisdom. All the qadr of Allah Azza wa Jal, Allah, all of them are based on wisdom of Allah Azza wa Jal. There is a wisdom behind the qadr, whether we know it or whether we don't. But we know that there is a wisdom behind every qadar, even if we don't understand it. And this is something that is very important. And this is asl. This is a great principle in the deen of Islam that we always go back to. We say Allah Azza wa Jal is wise, hakim. And there must be a wisdom behind what's happening. I may not know it, but that doesn't mean that what's happening is haphazard. But rather, there is a wisdom behind it, right? For Allah Azza wa Jal is Al-Hakim subhanahu wa ta'ala. And one of his attributes is Al-Hikmah, wise subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Al-Abd or the servant, one, one of us should not voice displeasure, nor question or try to object about the Qadr of Allah Azza wa Jal. We submit and then we go do the deeds. We submit to Allah Azza wa Jal and we know that there is a wisdom behind the Qadr and then we go and do the deeds. This is our job. Our job is not objecting to the Qadr of Allah Azza wa Jal nor question why this is happening and why that is happening. We know that there is a wisdom behind everything and we do the deeds. We, all, we submit to the orders of Allah Azza wa Jal and we avoid the prohibitions because this is what Allah Azza wa Jal ordered us to do. And this is our job. It is not our job to question the Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator. But our job is to mind our own business and our own business is to obey Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala and to submit to his orders. And that is why, that is why he showed us the good and the evil. He showed us both ways. And we said that Allah Azza wa Jal told us in the ayah of, or in the ayat of Surah Al-Layl, that people are split and their actions and their ways are diverse. وَأَنَّ سَعْيَكُمْ لَشَتَّى Sa'i of people are diverse. Some of them are what? Are good doers and some of them are even doers. And that is why Allah Azza wa Jal says, فَأَمَّا مَنْ أَعْطَى وَاتَّقَى As for the one who gives and is pious to Allah Azza wa Jal. And notice that we said that this, those verbs are attributed to the person, himself or herself. أَمَّا مَنْ أَعْطَى Who gives? It's a servant, me and you. On the other hand, وَأَمَّا مَنْ بَخِلَ وَاسْتَغْنَى As for the one who is stingy and he, and he thinks that he is self-sufficient, again that is the person. So these are the causes from the person. You choose whether you want to be from the good doers or from the or from the evil or from the evil doers. And we said that taking excuse in the qadar that I am from this or I am a sinner because Allah Azza wa Jal wrote me as a sinner. We said that this is an inaccurate or unacceptable excuse on the day of judgment. We said you choose your own course. You're sincere in guidance, Allah Azza wa Jal will help you and give you tawfiq. If you're not interested and you want to just blame the qadr of Allah Azza wa Jal, then you just don't want to actually be guided. You're not interested in guiding guidance, otherwise there is nothing stopping you from being guided. If you're interested in being guided, Wallahi Allah Azza wa Jal will not let down. Ibad Allah. Remember the statement. I swear by Allah Azza wa Jal. That he will never ever let down any person who is sincerely interested in guidance, Allah Azza wa Jal will not let that person down. He or she, if they are interested in being guidance and ask Allah Azza wa Jal for help, he will for sure help them. Wallatheena taqaw zadahum hudan 
والذين اهتدوا زادهم هدى واتاهم تقواهم and for those who are interested in guidance Allah Azza wa Jal will for sure guide us guide them it's not I'm not, I'm not I'm, it's not from me who is saying that but I'm Allah Azza wa Jal is telling us is telling us that طيب then Imam Abu Ja'far he said وكذلك أفعالهم this is where we actually left off he said in the 80, 87th statement وكذلك أفعالهم فيما علم منهم أن يفعلوا and the same applies to their deeds he knew whatever they would do now you notice that there is this and which is to link to the previous statement so what is it and the same what is the same applies to their deeds knowledge أحسنت بارك الله فيك ونفع الله بك this, remember, the, what, what does the previous statement say? And Allah has always known, and Allah the Most High has always known the number of those who will enter paradise and the number of those who will enter fire. Altogether. And the number will not be decreased, nor will it be decreased. He's saying, and the same, يعني, Allah also know, has always known their deeds. And He knew whatever they would do. The same applies to their deeds, and He knew whatever they would do. We said this is obviously the necessity of Allah Azza wa Jal knowing who will be from the people of paradise and who will be from the people of hellfire. Allah Azza wa Jal, we said we've already established that Allah Azza wa Jal has known all along who will be from the people of excuse me, from the people of paradise and who will be from the people of hellfire. He knows their number, he he knows who they are individually, and that number does not decrease or increase. And we said, this means that he knows what their deeds will be. This is the necessity of their knowledge. Why? Because we've said, yeah, brothers and sisters, the fact or whether a person is from the people of paradise or, or from, the, from the people of hellfire depends on their deeds. Their deeds dictates where they will end up being, what their eternal abode will be. Again, it's not a flip, a flip a coin, or it's not a gamble. It's not, Ya Ibad Allah, that, that I try my best to, do be, to, do, to be a good doer, or do the good deeds, and I hope that I will be among the people of paradise. If you do the good deeds, Allah Azza wa Jal will use that, as will make use of that as a reason and as a cause to enter paradise. So whether a person or if a person is from the people of paradise, this is a necessity or this is a consequence of their deeds. Yani, their deeds are the deeds of the people of paradise. And this means that Allah Azza wa Jal has known all along, since ever, knowledge that was not preceded by a lack of knowledge, what they will do, what their status is, what, they, what their sayings are, what their deeds are, what their beliefs are, in the details. And the, he knows subhanahu wa ta'ala as a result of that, whether they will be from the people of paradise or whether they are from the people of hellfire. Any question about that? All clear? Alhamdulillah. Then he said in the next statement, وَكُلٌّ مُيَسَّرٌ لِمَا خُلِقَ لَهُ وَكُلٌّ مُيَسَّرٌ لِمَا خُلِقَ لَهُ And everyone will have what he was created for made easy for him. This statement actually is very similar, or actually I can say that this is taken exactly from the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ that we saw before. And we mentioned before, which is in Sahih al Bukhari and Sahih Muslim, and Sunan al Imam Abi Dawood and al Tirmidhi and Ibn Majah, yani in pretty much all the books, where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam was talking about al Qadr and was talking about the fact that Allah Azza wa Jal created people for paradise. He created paradise and created people for it, right? And He knows their deeds. And he created hellfire and iyadu billah and created people for it. And he knows what their deeds is, are. Right? Remember? 
And again, so that there's no confusion, because some people may say, but wait a minute, this means that Allah is forcing them into being who they are. Right? No. This is not means that this is compulsion into being one of the two groups. But rather, when we say that Allah Azza wa Jal created paradise and created people for it, يعني, He created those people and He knows that they will do the deeds of paradise so they will be among its people. And He created people and He knows that they will do the deeds of the, of the hellfire billah, so they will be among its people. This is what it means. And so the Sahaba, they said, shouldn't we just rely on this? Why should we do that? Shouldn't we just rely on the book and what we are written? So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, I'malu, do, act, do the good deeds, avoid the prohibitions. فَكُلٌ مُيَسَّرٌ لِمَا خُلِقَ لَهُ Not as the statement. وَكُلٌ مُيَسَّرٌ لِمَا خُلِقَ لَهُ And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in that hadith, he said, I'malu, فَكُلٌ مُيَسَّرٌ لِمَا خُلِقَ لَهُ So this statement from Imam Abu Ja'far is a great statement. But taken from the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, where he said, alayhi salatu wa salam, to the sahaba and to the, to the ummah afterward, he said, do, don't rely on the qadar. Al qadar is hidden from you. And we're going to see in the next statements, in the next page or so, that it is the secret of Allah azza wa jal. Being a secret, it is a secret from you. Jazakallah khair. So don't take excuse, don't rely on it. Don't just actually settle down on it. It's a secret. You don't know. You have no knowledge. None of us knows what's written for them. So don't take it an excuse. And don't rely on it. But rather, roll the sleeves and do the, and do the good deeds. And avoid the prohibitions. Submit to the orders of Allah Azza wa Jal. This is your job and my job and the job of every person. فَكُلُّ لِمَا خُلِقَ لَهُ this taysir, notice, this taysir in here, muyassar, وَكُلُّ muyassar from a taysir, made easy, right? Every person, for every person, it will be made easy for them to do the deeds that they want to choose and how they are written. Because Allah Azza wa Jal knows who, what they will do, right? And what their deeds will look like. This is also similar to the ayat of Surah Al-Layl where Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَأَنَّ سَعْيَكُمْ لَشَتَّى فَأَمَّا مَنْ أَعْطَى وَاتَّقَى وَصَدَّقَ بِالْحُسْنَى فَسَنُيَسِّرُهُ Again, Taysir. In his statement, Imam Abu Ja'far said, وَكُلٌ مُيَسَّرُ And we said this is taken from the hadith of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. اعملوا فَكُلٌ مُيَسَّرْ تَيْسِيرٌ And Allah Azza wa Jal is saying, those who choose to do the good deeds, it will be made easy for them to be guided. فَسَنُيَسِّرُهُ لِلْيُسْرَى As for him who gives يعني, in charity and keeps his duty to Allah and fears him and believes in Al-Husna, and we said, anybody remembers what Al-Husna فَأَمَّا مَنْ أَعْطَى وَاتَّقَى وَصَدَّقَ بِالْحُسْنَى صَدَّقَ from التصديق Believing Submitting to الْحُسْنَى What is الْحُسْنَى عباد الله? I mentioned it before No excuse Come on brothers غفر الله لي ولكم الحسنى What is الحسنى? Husna is la ilaha illallah and its necessities. To believe, يعني, to وصدق بالحسنى يعني صدق بلا إله إلا الله ومقتضاها and its and its necessities and consequences. يعني صدق بالدين الإسلام in general because this is what it is summarized in la ilaha illallah. So those, again, notice, follow me brothers. Allah Azza wa Jal is telling us, As for the one who gives, who is giving? Al-Abd. Al-Abd is giving. Al-Abd 
And the Abd ittaqa. وصدق بالحسنى من صدق who is the one who is making تصديق Allah لا me and you العبد the servant so these verbs are referring to العبد servant me and you male or female notice the ayah فسألوا يسيره who is making تيسير now Allah فسألوا يسيره Allah عز وجل is talking about himself فَسَلُوا يَسِّرُهُ لِلْيُسْرَى We will make it easy for that servant who chose and take الأسباب, took الأسباب of الهداية أعطى and showed piety والتقى وصدق believed in الحسنى Allah عز وجل فَسَلُوا يَسِّرُهُ He will make it easy for him to be guided. On the other hand, this is on one hand. On the other hand, this is why we said that the, 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 the ways of people are diverse. On the other hand, وَأَمَّا مَنْ أَعْتَقَ In contrast with that, وَأَمَّا مَنْ بَخِلَ وَاسْتَغْنَى As for the one who is greedy, miser, and thinks himself self-sufficient, وَاسْتَغْنَى He thinks that he is self-sufficient, he has no need to Allah Azza wa Jal. وَكَذَّبْ الآن تكذيب صدق The first group صدق بالحسنة. Here, كذب بالحسنة. Who belied and disbelieved in الحسنة. What is الحسنة? لا إله إلا الله. And its consequences. And its necessities. And what it, it indicates. And it leads to. فسنو يسيره. Again, فسنو يسيره للعسرة. So they will actually, it will be made easy for them. It will, we will make smooth for him the path of evil. So it's up to the person. Nothing compulsion, compulsory. There is no compulsion upon people. Allah Azza wa Jal is not compelling the servants to whether, whether, whether to be from the people of paradise or whether to be from the people of, of hellfire. It all boils down to the servant, me and you. We choose our own course. If we're interested in guidance, Allah Azza wa Jal will make it easy for us. And if a person, we seek refuge in Allah Azza wa Jal, is not interested and wants misguidance, sure, so be it. Allah Azza wa Jal will make it easy for that person. So you notice that for guidance, for people who want guidance, Allah will make it easy for them. And for people who want misguidance, Allah will make it easy for them. That is why وَكُلُّنْ And everyone The guided and the misguided people According to what they want وَكُلُّنْ مُيَسَّرٌ لِمَا خُلِقَ لَهُ And every person will, it will, it will have what he was created for made easy If you want guidance فَسَلُوا يَسِّرُهُ لِلْيُسْرَى If you want misguidance وَالْعِيَاذُ بِاللَّهِ We seek refuge in Allah Azza wa Jal That anyone of, among us or listening to us to be among those people, then it will be made easy for them. This taysir, it means that Allah Azza wa Jal created the Jannah, again like we said before, and created people for it. Created the Jannah, paradise, and created people for it, and he knew that these will be among the people of happiness. These will be among the people of happiness. And it will be made easy for them to be guided and to do the good deeds. And Allah Azza wa Jal also created hellfire and created people for it. And it will be made easy for them to choose that path of misguidance and the path of evil and of unhappiness. Like I said, كُلٌّ muyassar does not in any way, shape, or form means compulsion. There is no compulsion in there. They choose, but Allah Azza wa Jal knows ahead of time. He knows beforehand, prior to their doing, He knows subhanahu wa ta'ala that they would choose to do the deeds, the evil deeds and the bad deeds, which are the deeds of the people of hellfire. And that is why he wrote them as such, because he knows what they're going to do. And he wrote them as such, 
and he knows what's that he knows the evil that is in their souls and the evil in their nafis and that they will be from the people of hellfire and that they will choose misguidance when ayadu billah so he leaves them up to themselves so he actually let them down and leave them to their own selves when allah azza wa jalla leaves them to their own selves then the misguidance will be made easy for them going astray and going misguided will be made easy for them when allah azza wa jalla left them on their own when allah azza wa jalla left them on their own this indicates ya ibad allah something very important that the people of hell of i'm sorry the people of paradise Allah Azza wa Jal treated them with his fadl. He helped them and guided them and bestowed upon them his tawfiq to do the good deeds. While the people of hellfire wal iyadu billah, he actually deprived them of his fadl. He treated them with his justice. He treated them with his justice, right? He gave them all the tools and all the means to be able to recognize the, the the path of guidance and the path of happiness right but he deprived them of his fadl because they did not choose guidance while the people of paradise allah azza wa jal bestowed upon them something extra above and beyond his justice Nobody should understand from this that he was Allah Azza wa Jal is unjust to the people of misguidance or the people who went who went astray. No, he treated them with justice, and he gave them everything that they need to be able to recognize the right path. While the people of of paradise, he bestowed upon them something more. He bestowed upon them something higher than just the level of justice. the level of fadl Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa minnatuhu alayhim he bestowed upon them and he gave them his tawfiq and his fadl and he guided them and made it easy for them to be guided and to do the good deeds as a result of this if you see if you see yourself upon guidance if you see yourself obeying and submitting to the obedience of Allah azza wa jal ihmadillah Thank Allah Azza wa Jal and praise Him that He selected you and He gave you this extra bounty, which is the fadl of guiding you and making it easy for you to do the good deeds and the deeds of the people of Paradise. Allahumma lak alhamd, ala fadlik wa minnatika, Subhanaka wa Taala. Taib. So He is treating us with His fadl. while he is treating the people of hellfire with justice and we said that al-fadl is a higher level than justice and allah azza wa jal knows best where to put his fadl and where to put his justice allahumma lakal hamd طيب and we pray to allah azza wa jal to keep helping us and to keep bestowing upon us his tawfiq allahumma waffiqna wahdina and keep guiding us That is why we pray to Allah Azza wa Jal in every rak'ah of every salah. Ihdina as-sirat al-mustaqeem. Yani keep make giving us tawfiq, keep guiding us, keep helping us and preserving us and keeping us steadfast on the path on the right path on the path of good deeds. طيب. Then in the next statement number 89 الإمام أبو جعفر he said والأعمال بالخواتيم والأعمال بالخواتيم and deeds will be in accordance with their conclusions. والله this is a great statement. I cannot tell you how great the statement is, but enough to say that a lot of our righteous ancestors. they used to shed they used to shed a lot of tears when the mention of al khawatim is mentioned in front of them when they mention the conclusions of the deeds which is when what the state that they die upon 
the conclusion of their lifespan, the conclusion of their deeds, what they die upon. When they mention this, or when it is mentioned to them, or in front of them, they, shed, they used to shed a lot of tears out of fear, out of being in consciousness of what their conclusion will be. And they used to say that the hearts of an abrar, of the good doers, the hearts of the good doers are attached and always concerned about al-khawatim, about the conclusions. They ask what our life will be concluded with, what our deeds will be concluded with. And this shows us how important this is and that the believer should always be concerned about what my ending will be. Don't think and don't be arrogant that I am on guidance, that I reached and I got there. But rather, keep asking Allah Azza wa Jal to keep guiding you. And don't, <coughs> don't be fooled by the fact that you are on guidance. And keep asking Allah Azza wa Jal to keep guiding you and to keep bestowing upon you his tawfiq subhanahu wa ta'ala and his taysir to do the good deeds. For nobody knows for sure how the ending will be. And for those among you who remember the hadith, the great hadith of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, which has to do with the creation of the son of Adam in the womb of their mother, which we explained many times in the past. And this is part of al Afordi Hadith Nawawi. Brother Mushtaba, I see you looking at me as if you've never heard of it. Come on, brother. We've actually explained... No, I'm not, I'm not trying to put you on the spot. But we've explained it multiple times in the past. We explained it in here in this masjid. We explained it in Masjid Rolling Meadows. And more recently, we explained it in Masjid uh, MSI. And we have a brother from there, Barakallahu Fi. So we explained it many times in the past. And we said that one of the things that we should always be concerned about is the fact about how our ending will be and what the status. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us in that long hadith, remember, right? It is in uh, Sahih al-Bukhari and Sahih Muslim uh, from hadith Ibn Mas'ud radiyallahu anhu where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that verily the creation of each one of you is brought together in his mother's womb for 40 days in the form of nutfa a drop, then he becomes a alaqa, which is a clot of blood for a like period, and for another 40 days, and then a mutra, which is a morsel of flesh for a like period, which is for another 40 days, that's 120 days, then there is sent to him the angel who blows his soul into him, and who is commended with four matters, to write down his rizq, and his lifespan, his actions, and whether he will be happy, and unhappy. And this happy or unhappy with respect to the ending. And he alayhi salatu wasalam, then he, then he gave example by the one other than whom there is no deity. Verily one of you performs the actions of the people of paradise until there is but an arm's length between him and it. And that which has been written overtakes him. And so he acts with the actions of the people of hellfire and then enters it. And then on the other hand, and verily one of you performs the actions of the people of hellfire until there is but an arm's length between him and it and that which has been written overtakes him. And so he acts with the actions of the people of paradise and thus he enters it. So you notice that what matters, العبرة, what matters, wallahi, all that matters is with the ending. What your ending is, and what your deeds will be concluded with. Why? Because what your ending is, if you actually eventually repent to Allah Azza wa Jal, then this erases everything before it. Everything that preceded, preceded this, you know, those uh, sins and those disobedience, Allah Azza wa Jal will forgive them. So the person should not say, None of us, Allah, should actually, this fear of the ending and the conclusion, this should not lead a person to give up hope on Allah. This is not to say. 
No one should ever say that I have mountains upon mountains of sins and mistakes. Allah Azza wa Jal can raise. Don't give hope. Don't give up hope in Allah Tabaraka wa Taala. Ya ibad Allah, ya Abdullah, ya Amat Allah. Always think of Allah Azza wa Jal and keep the hope in Allah Tabaraka wa Taala and know that Allah Azza wa Jal will forgive them. And Allah Azza wa Jal says in the ayah of Surah Al Anfal. قل للذين كفروا قل للذين كفروا إن إن ينتهوا يغفر لهم ما قد سلف وإن يعودوا فقد مضت سنة الأولين. Say to those who have disbelief, if they cease, if they cease from what, from disbelief, and go back to Allah عز وجل, their past will be forgiven. يغفر لهم ما قد سلف. ما سلف, what has preceded that, will be forgiven for them. But if they return. Then the examples of those punished before them have already preceded, yani as a warning and as a sign, as a lesson to be taken and to be learned. So the person should always be fearful. If you have been sinning, then repent to Allah Azza wa Jal and go back to Allah Azza wa Jal and make inaba to Allah Azza wa Jal. As a matter of fact, run back to Allah Azza wa Jal. Fafirru ila Allah, ibad Allah. Firru, run back to Allah Azza wa Jal and hasten in the forgiveness and in seeking the forgiveness from Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. And Allah Azza wa Jal is promising to forgive you. And if you have been upon obedience and upon guidance and upon belief, then keep doing it. Don't give up. Don't get bored. Because wallahi, this is wadhifat al-hayat. This is the job of the life. We keep doing and we keep inching every hour of every day, of every month, of every year, until we meet Allah Azza wa Jal in the hope that we will meet Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala upon, upon guidance and upon uh, obedience to Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala and upon, and upon belief. From the, guide, from the kindness of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala is that if a person who lives upon good and is always sincere in wanting to do good Allah Azza wa Jal will conclude his deeds with goodness. If they are sincere, Allah Azza wa Jal will bestow upon them by concluding their deeds with in a state of goodness and happiness. But if they are not, if the person is has been upon this misguidance and upon uh, evil and upon disobedience to Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, and he does not take with the causes and does not seek guidance from Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, then he will be ended, his, his deeds will be ended, will be ended likewise. Some people say, but uh, I will repent, but later on. We said, repent to Allah Azza wa Jal. If you've been uh, disobeying Allah Azza wa Jal, then repent. But we said, hasten to repentance. Don't delay don't make tasweef, as we call in the Arabic language. And a tasweef comes from the word sawfa. I will. I will repent. I will start praying next Ramadan. I will start doing the good deeds when I get buried. Not sure what the connection is, but you know, we've seen this, right? People say, when I get buried, inshallah, when I'm in the 40s, I will, inshallah, start doing the good deeds. Start praying, brother. Inshallah, next Ramadan, I will start. That's... This is wishful thinking because there is a tiny problem, not a tiny problem, but you know, just to make it a point. There is a tiny problem in, the, in there, in that argument. And the tiny, tiny problem in that argument is as such. Do you know when you're going to die? Does anybody know when they're going to die? If you say, I will repent to Allah Azza wa Jal when Ramadan comes, who guarantees that he will live or she will live until Ramadan? Nobody. There is no guarantee. What if death surprises you before you are ready? What if death surprises you when you least expected it? A lot of people are actually uh, heedless about death because they are still young. They are still in the youth. And they're still heedless about the death that I'm still young. You know, I'm, it's, uh, death is not going to come now. And they actually go into deep sleep because of that. We say you never know. So don't delay. If you have been uh, uh, disobeying Allah Azza wa Jal or you've been sinning, 
then hasten quickly without any delay back to Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. And, you've, and if you've been on good, and you've been doing good and obeying Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, then thank Allah Azza wa Jal for His tawfiq and uh, uh, always still be fearful of the evil and ending and the bad ending because this will keep actually encouraging you and will keep giving you energy to do better and better and better and inch closer to Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. And we don't, as a result of this, we never actually judge any person. We never judge any person that this person is from the people of paradise and this person is from the people of hellfire. Because we never know what their ending will be. Nobody knows. And how many times have we seen people who have been in, yani, among the worst of humanity and they actually turn around 180 degrees. They used to do the deeds that you actually feel shameful to even mention them. And they actually turned 180 degrees and they went back to Allah Azza wa and guided them. And this is how their deeds were concluded. And vice versa, like we also saw in the hadith of the, of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So, Ya Ibad Allah, the true believer is the one who is always mindful and who is always conscious and who is always concerned and always and constantly thinking about the ending. How my ending will be? What will, my, what will my ending look like? And if you keep thinking about it, this will actually, if you think about it, if you th- keep, uh, if you keep uh, being mindful and conscious about what my ending will be, this will keep reminding you and will keep bringing you back to the straight path and doing the good deeds and repenting if you err. And we do err. None of us is muscle. No matter how hard we try to obey Allah Azza wa Jal, we're going to err. We're going to wrong ourselves. But the point is that you immediately and quickly, without delay, you go back to Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. And if you keep constantly mindful of this khatima, wal a'malu bil khawatim. Khatima, my conclusion, right? What my conclusion of my deeds or the conclusion of my life will be if you are always mindful and you're believing in the way we described about al qadr. Uh, of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, it will make the person always conscious and always careful about their iman and about their deeds. And you will see that the person will always be inching closer to Allah Azza wa Jal, trying their best. And if they err, they quickly go back to Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. And we know that Allah Azza wa Jal does not oppress any person. Allah Azza wa Jal does not oppress any person. And those who choose the path of misguidance, like we said, they will be actually let down by Allah Azza wa Jal and it will be made easy for them. As for the people of paradise, are the ones who are constantly fighting back the inclinations of their soul. Fighting back in nafis and its inclination, bad, bad inclinations and evil inclinations um, until they, it is concluded with goodness until it is, it comes to a good end and a happy end. And Allah Azza wa Jal says in the ayah of Surah Al-Ankabud, وَالَّذِينَ جَاهَدُوا فِيْنَا لَنَهْدِيَنَّهُمْ سُبُلَنَا وَالَّذِينَ جَاهَدُوا Which jihad? Now obviously some people say, oh brother, don't mention jihad. This is jihad al-nafs. This is fighting, which is the greatest type of jihad, by the way. I'm not saying this just because of we're being, you know, we're actually streaming but rather because this is what is haq. The greatest type of jihad is jihad and nafs fighting back your own inclination and your, your uh, uh, internal enemy, which is your soul and its uh, internal inclination. وَالَّذِينَ جَاهَدُوا فِينَا Those who strive hard in us, yani in the cause of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, we will surely guide them to our path and verily Allah is with al-muhsineen. Allah what, what, what does it mean Allah Azza wa Jal is, is with the Muhsineen? Yani he supports them and preserve them and back them up and help them and give them his tawfiq subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah Azza wa Jal also likewise says in Surah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, وَالَّذِينَ اهْتَدَوْا زَادَهُمْ هُدًا وَآتَاهُمْ تَقْوَاهُمْ While as for those who accept guidance, he increases their guidance. How does he increase? By making it easy for them. Remember, 
فَسَنُيَسِّرُهُ وَكُلٌّ مُيَسَّرٌ لِمَا خُلِقَ لَهُ Allah Azza wa Jal will make it easy and He will increase their guidance and bestows upon them their piety. فَاللَّهُمَّ اِخْتُمْ لَنَا بِالصَّالِحَاتِ أَعْمَالَنَا The Imam Abu Ja'far, rahimahullah ta'ala, is saying, وَالْأَعْمَالُ بِالْخَوَاتِينَ All that matters is in the conclusion. So we ask Allah Azza wa Jal for His fadl and for His man and for His bounty and we pray to Him subhanahu wa ta'ala, اللَّهُمَّ اِخْتُمْ لَنَا بِالصَّالِحَاتِ أَعْمَالَنَا اللَّهُمَّ آمِينَ Then he said, any question about that? All clear? Alhamdulillah. Is that a good indication that I'm a good teacher? Or are we all asleep? <laughs> no, inshallah, I think it's the... Which one? The first one. Okay, alhamdulillah. Tayyip, I just want to see. Make sure that you're still all awake. Tayyip. In the next statement, in Imam Abu Ja'far, statement number 90, he said, وَالشَّقِيُّ مَنْ شَقِيُّ oh, I'm sorry, وَالسَّعِيدُ مَنْ سَعِيدَ بِقَضَاءِ اللَّهِ وَالشَّقِيُّ مَنْ شَقِيَ بِقَضَاءِ اللَّهِ And the fortunate person is the one who is fortunate by the decree of Allah, and the wretched person is the one who is wretched by the decree of Allah, Tabaraka wa ta'ala. This again may be misunderstood. And the fortunate person is the one who is fortunate by the decree of Allah. This may be easily misunderstood by people and say that, right here, the Imam is, is, is saying that Allah Azza wa Jal wrote certain people as fortunate, as sa'id, happy, and these are the ones who will be happy. Yani it is all by the qadr of Allah Azza wa Jal. It is all written upon us. Yani in other ways, as if it is compulsion upon people. Uh, uh, whether it is what Allah Azza wa Jal wanted and wrote this on them, as if they are being forced into being whether happy or unhappy. And we say this is not the meaning of this statement. This is not the meaning of this statement. But rather, it means that Allah Azza wa Jal knows who are the people of happiness, and He wrote them as happy. And the ones who are happy are the ones who are um, Allah Azza wa Jal knew that they will be happy and he wrote them as such. Right? Like we said before, that Allah Azza wa Jal knows the people of paradise and he knows their number. Likewise, the same thing applies to the shaqi or the unhappy or the wretched. We seek refuge in Allah Azza wa Jal. We know that also the one whom Allah Azza wa Jal knows is unhappy. He, will, he or she will do the deeds uh, of uh, the people of, para, of uh, hellfire. Uh, he knows them. Right? And he knows their deeds. So they were written as such, as a wretched person. And so these will be the people who will be, وَالْعِيَادُ billah wretched. So Allah Azza wa Jal, when, when He created the creation, He knows each one of them individually what they will do. And He knows whether they will be from the people of Sa'ada, happiness, or whether they, are, they will be from the people of Ta'asa, or unhappiness, وَالْعِيَادُ billah or Shaqa. Um, and we also, if you remember from that hadith that we saw a little earlier, hadith Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, remember, which talks about the creation of the son of Adam in the womb of their mother. One of the things that happened, right, we're talking about the sa'ada and the shaqa, happiness or unhappiness. Allah Azza wa Jal knows that. And he wrote it. As a matter of fact, if you remember, this is one of the things that will be written upon the 42nd night. Upon the 42nd night, Allah Azza wa Jal sent the angel and he orders the angel to write four things. One of them is, the angel will ask Allah Azza wa Jal, Ay Rabb, O Lord, Ashaqiyun am Sa'id, والسعيد والشقي نارس والسعيد من سعيد بقضاء الله والشقي من شقي بقضاء الله The angel will ask Allah Azza wa Jal One of the four things He will ask أي رب O Lord أشقي أم سعيد Will be he happy or will he be unhappy He or she Right? The baby Will they be happy or will they be 
unhappy. So this is actually one of the four things that will be written, that the angel will write in their records. And Allah Azza wa Jal will decree whatever He wishes, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah Azza wa Jal will decree whatever He wishes. Why? Because He already knows. He already knows whether this person will, their life will be concluded with happiness or unhappiness. Whether it will be concluded with guidance or misguidance. Right? وَالْعِبْرَ بِالْخَوَاتِينَ or وَالْأَعْمَالُ بِالْخَوَاتِينَ So this is all by the qada and the qadar of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. Right? By the decree of Allah Azza wa Jal. And when we say by the qadar of Allah Azza wa Jal, why do we, what do we mean by that? When we say that Allah Azza wa Jal, it is by the decree of Allah Azza wa Jal, it means that He knew, that He wrote, that He willed it to happen, and He created it into existence. Remember the four matters or the four things that are comprised in Al Qadar. So, Sa'id, man sa'ida bi qada Allah, yani the happy one is the one whom Allah Azza wa Jal decreed as happy. Yani, in other words, Allah Azza wa Jal knew that they are among the happy ones and He wrote them as such in a lawh al mahfuz and He decreed it to the angel when they were sent, when the angel was sent at the 42nd night to write them as happy or unhappy based on the knowledge of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. And this is all by the will of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. Likewise, the shaqi, the unhappy, also the one who is written by the qadr of Allah Azza wa Jal as uh, unhappy. So there is no compulsion, right? And again, it is not a flip coin, wal'iyadu billah. Not at all. It is with a great wisdom by Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala that he knows, and this is from the, from the preceding knowledge. Ilmullah, al-awwal and al-sabiq, subhanahu wa ta'ala. The last statement that I want to touch upon, or start actually, because this will take some time, and this is, ya ibadallah, an important, very important statement. The statement number 91. وَأَصْلُ الْقَدَرِ وَأَصْلُ الْقَدَرِ سِرُّ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى فِي خَلْقِهِ سِرُّ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى فِي خَلْقِهِ And the pre-decree or the decree, القدر, is fundamentally the secret of Allah. The secret of Allah, the Most High, within His creation. This is something that is very important. And this is something that the, the, the believer should always remember and should be something that should be a warning not to go deeper into Al-Qadr and go deeper than what Allah Azza wa Jal told us or educated us about Al-Qadr, right? And to try to see if we can understand it fully and completely. Because Allah Azza wa Jal is telling us, this is my secret. And if it is the secret of Allah Azza wa Jal, nobody will be able to uncover it. And no, nobody will be able to unlock it. It is a secret. That Allah Azza wa Jal did not reveal to any person. To any of his creation. And you're going to see actually in the next statement, that the Imam Abu Jafar is saying, لم, ي- لم يطلع على ذلك ملك مقرب وَلَا نَبِيٌّ مُرْسَلٍ In the 92nd statement. Knowledge of it, يعني of Al-Qadr, which is a secret of Allah Azza wa Jal, he's saying knowledge of it is not acquired by any angel drawn near nor any prophet sent. If neither an angel drawn near to Allah Azza wa Jal, مَلَكٌ مُقَرَّبٌ مُقَرَّبٌ to Allah Tabarak nor any prophet sent, وَلَا نَبِيٌّ مُرْسَلٌ Including Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If none of them has knowledge of this al-qadr in its entirety, in its completeness, in its details, except what Allah azza wa jal revealed to some of them, those portions that Allah azza wa jal revealed of, uh, of some of them. But what we're talking about al-qadr, which is the perfect qadr, all the knowledge, the complete and detailed knowledge of all the decree of Allah Azza wa Jal. We say this is 
the secret of Allah Azza wa Jal. And if it is the secret, don't try to uncover it. Guess why? Because you'll never be able to do so. No matter what you try. It is a knowledge that Allah Azza wa Jal has protected and has kept secret to, him, to, to, to himself subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the son of Adam or any of the creation, no matter how they try to unlock it or uncover it, they're not going to be able to do so. And the Imam Abu Jafar in later statement, he says that it will only lead to frustration because you're not going to be able, that's a goal that is unreachable and will cause the person to be misguided. A lot of people want to go so deep into Al-Qadr and understanding all the events that happen by the Qadr of Allah Azza wa Jal. And they, they want to try to learn the details of why this happened and why that happens. And we say to be able to do so, to be able to do so, then you have to have the same knowledge like Allah wa Ta'ala. And who can have that? No one. No one can have the knowledge of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. And if you remember, we said that Iman bil Qadr is to believe that Allah Azza wa Jal knows everything. Allah Azza wa Jal knows everything. His knowledge is all encompassing. So for a person to be able to understand the Qadr in its entirety, then you have a need for the same knowledge like Allah Azza wa Jal. And who can who is capable of that? No one. Not even an angel that is drawn close, nor a sent messenger. And that is why it is the secret of Allah, Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. And Allah, it is the secret of Allah Azza wa Jal who created this universe. And the Qadr is how he manages all affairs in this universe. How he decreed that things will happen in this universe. And how matters will be managed in this universe. And this is something that Allah Azza wa Jal kept to himself. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he did not, uh, uh, and he did not uh, allow any person or any creation to have access to it, or not, or he did not actually uncover it to any of his creation. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, even the angels, they do not know what's going to happen to, uh, to the skies or to the earth, or they don't know what happens to every person or what they will do. This is only from the knowledge of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. And they know only by the portions or by the amount that Allah Azza wa Jal revealed to them. Alimul Ghayb, fala yudhiru ala ghaybihi ahada. He is the one who knows the unseen and who knows the decree and who knows what's going to happen. And he does not reveal that to any person except those whom he selected to reveal some of that knowledge to them. For example, like we saw, when the baby is being created in the womb of their mother, Allah Azza wa Jal sent at the 42nd night the angel and he reveals to them. At that point, he reveals to that angel whether it is a boy or a, fee, or, or a girl. Before then, nobody ever knew that this particular baby is it a he or a she. Nobody knows. When do they know? When Allah Azza wa Jal decrees and tell the angel and the angel will write in, the, in their record. So this is how when he revealed certain knowledge. Before then it was exclusive to Allah Azza wa Jal. Nobody knows. Likewise what their deeds, what they will do in general and whether they are from the happy or unhappy. So it is a secret of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala and it is in no way possible for the humans or for the jinn, for that matter, to be able to unlock that secret and try to go beyond what Allah Azza wa Jal told us. And this is something that we've been forbidden from going after. It is a knowledge that has been hidden from us. So there is no point actually in trying to seek it and attain to reveal it because it's not, it's not going to happen. And Allah Azza wa Jal, and I finish by this, and Allah Azza wa Jal actually hinted to that where he said subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-An'am, وَعِنْدَهُ مَفَاتِحُ الْغَيْبِ لَا يَعْلَمُهَا إِلَّا هُوَ وَعِنْدَهُ مَفَاتِحُ الْغَيْبِ لَا يَعْلَمُهَا إِلَّا هُوَ The literal translation of this full ayah, and with him are the keys of the ghayb, none knows them but he. None knows, him, none knows them but he, and he knows whatever 
there is in the earth and in the sea. Not a leaf falls, but he knows it. There is not a grain in the darkness of the earth, nor anything fresh or dry, but is written in a clear record. Subhanahu wa ta'ala knows everything, minor, major, in details. Everything is known to Allah Azza wa Jal, but that is as a secret to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he only, he only uh, 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 holds and owns the keys of the unhidden uh, or of the hidden, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let me stop here, inshallah ta'ala, and we will resume, inshallah, next Saturday. I want to uh, leave uh, or open the door uh, for a couple of minutes of questions uh, or comments, inshallah. Any questions or comments? No? Are you sure? So <laughs> Definition of al-qadr? Oh, al-fadl. Al-fadl. Now, so this is actually a good question. Al-fadl, uh, the brother is asking about what is the definition of al-fadl? Fadlullah. Like, this is actually a very interesting question and very important question. Um, this is actually something that we talked about much earlier in this text of Aqidah. If you remember... We said that Imam Abu Ja'far has split the talk about Al-Qadr into multiple sections across the Sa'atidah. He didn't actually, uh, he didn't make it in one section. And this is one of the minor critique about the Sa'atidah, that it would have been better if he merged them. So if you remember, we actually touched upon Al-Qadr before. And in here we're actually touching upon Al-Qadr in, in greater details. And believe it or not, Imam Abu Ja'far will touch upon the Qadr later on in this Aqidah. But the reason we're spending a lot of time about these statements is I want to actually have a full discussion about Al-Qadr in here. So that when we hit Al-Qadr again in this Aqidah, we're going to skim, literally skim over it because we've already covered it. So we're taking the opportunity that we talk about it in, in, in its entirety and in, in details so that we have a good understanding and we don't need to repeat it afterward because this, is, this would be the best way. Back when we talked about Al-Qadr before, we talked about Al-Adl and we talked about Al-Fadl of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. And we said that the Fadl of Allah Azza wa Jal is a higher status than justice of Allah Tabaraka. We said Allah Azza wa Jal does not oppress any person. وَلَا يَظْلِمُ رَبُّكَ أَحَدًا And this is by the way something that is very important to remember when we talk about Al-Qadr. No matter what happens out there in the universe, even if it looks bad, even if it looks evil, right? Even if it looks, if it, looks it may look cruel from the outside. Always remember that Allah Azza wa Jal is adil, just does not oppress any person. This will actually make it easier for you to understand. Second, that Allah Azza wa is wise. Nothing happens out there in the universe except based on the wisdom of Allah Azza wa Even if you do not see it. This will help you understand the Qadr. Right. Now with respect to the guidance of mis- or and misguidance of people. We said those who are guided... Allah Azza wa Jal bestowed upon them their fadl, his fadl. And those who are misguided, Allah Azza wa Jal only treated them with his justice. What does that mean? It means that Allah Azza wa Jal, when he created the son of Adam, when Allah Azza wa Jal created the son of Adam, he created them and sent them the tools and revealed books to them and send down messengers to show them and to guide them to the straight path and to tell them that which is good and that which is evil. He sent hundreds of thousands of prophets and he sent 125 messengers as we learn from the different hadith. So there was no scarcity of messengers and prophets. On the contrary, Allah Azza wa Jal sent so many messengers and prophets alayhi, alayhi wa to remind people and to guide them. The guidance 
of al bayan wal irshad to to teach them and to show them and to, to, to teach them that which is good and that which is evil. And sent down books and gave them the tools. He gave us the vision and he gave them he gave us the hearing, the capability to hear, and he gave us mind to be able to reason with them. He gave us intellect and he gave us minds to be able to reason and to understand. And he gave us the tools and the means to be able to understand that this is good and this is evil. Allah showed us the two paths. Showed us the both paths. And he sent books and sent messengers. If he, if this is all that he did, this is enough. It should be enough for all son of Adam to be able to tell that which is good and follow it. This is justice. This is justice. Any son of Adam should be able, based on that, to be able to tell that which is good from that which is evil. Those who are interested in guidance, those who are interested in guidance, Allah Azza wa Jal bestow upon them something even higher than that. He gave them the tawfiq. And he gives them, make it easy for them, the path of guidance. And this is the fadl. He gives them something more. And those who are not interested in guidance, he deprives them from that above and beyond his fadl. His extra bounty, which is al fadl, which is the tawfiq, to make it easy for them to be guided. But why? Because they were interested in guidance. So he deprived them from that. But that doesn't mean that he oppressed them. Why? Because he already gave them everything that they need to be able to get to be guided. He sent books and he sent messengers and he gave them eyes and ears and minds to be able to tell. When they weren't interested, he deprived them from his fadl, which is his tawfiq. Those who are guided, Allah Azza wa Jal bestowed upon them this extra bounty which is al fadl and the minna and the tawfiq from him subhanahu wa ta'ala and that is why i said thank allah azza wa jal for this tawfiq subhanahu wa ta'ala i want to make it a little bit closer to your mind maybe hopefully this will make it clearer in a minute inshallah or two and this is an example that i gave before if somebody and uh, brother tamir you want to actually uh, follow this example we say to Allah Azza wa Jal belong the greatest example. وَلِلَّهِ الْمَثَلُ الْأَعْلَى But just an example to bring it closer to our mind. If you, brother, I'm going to give the example of you, brother Tamir. If you happen to be for, not, not from this town, let's say you are journeying, you are traveling, and you happen to be in this, in this, uh, in this masjid, and you want to catch a flight in, 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 uh, in the airport, or here. You don't know how to get there. So you, are ha- you happen to be in this masjid and you ask, how do I get to O'Hare Airport? Somebody tells you, okay, it's easy. All you do is you exit from this masjid and you, say, you see that road in front of the masjid. This is Irving Park. You go left. You take the exit to Elgin O'Hare Expressway and then you go north on 290 and then you make a right on 90, I-90. That will lead you all the way and then follow the signs to O'Hare Airport. He was just with you. He was fair with you, right? He gave you what you needed. Another person tells you, you know what? I'm going to take you over there. Follow. He didn't have to. He didn't have to. The other person, he already gave you instructions, clear instructions of how to get there. This person, he went above and beyond. He told you, I have my car. I'm going to take you over there. Follow me. This is extra. ذَلِكَ فَضْلُ اللَّهِ يُؤْتِهِ مَنْ يَشَاءَ Allah Azza wa Jal does not oppress any person and he knows who deserves his justice only and who deserves his fadl on top of his justice. So the ones who he did not deprive from, from his fadl, he did not oppress them. But the ones who chose guidance, he treated them with something more and he gave them and bestowed upon them his tawfiq. Clear? Alhamdulillah, Allahumma nas'aluka min fadlik 
ونسألك سبحانك أن تختم لنا بالصالحات أعمالنا وأن توفقنا لكل خير وأن تختم بالصالحات أعمالنا هذا والله أعلم وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وياك طيب I think it's time for إذن